Hello everyone, Jonathan here with Excel Help Now, and this is part two of the video series going over how to create this sports betting dashboard with Tracker. If you didn't see part one, we went over creating a, a bet log with all of our data that's gonna drive our, our dasher, dashboard and slicers, along with some data validations for bet type, sports book, league, and sports. So definitely check out that video first, to be able to figure out how to create this bet log tracker, which will have our odds, our wager, our how much we won, and our return percent. This is really what's needed in order to drive the dashboard is a really good data data table. And then so today's video will be more of the, the fun part of actually creating some visuals and some interactive slicers so we can start to have a, a dynamic dashboard to work with. And so what I'm going to focus on today is going to be this sports betting dashboard summary table up here, this dark blue where we're going to have a total profit, total ROI, total bets, and overall win percentage summary table. You can see the slicers will drive the, the changes of those pivot tables. So that's what we're going to focus on today. There's a lot of charts and tables in this dashboard. So we're going to break it up into smaller pieces so we don't have a couple hour long video here, but make it digestible. And today's video, we'll start to see some return on what we produce. So with that, let's flip over to where we picked up on video one, and we'll start building out some of our pivot tables and get some data visualization started. Okay, I'm pulling up where we were after video one. I have added a lot more rows in here just so we have a lot of data to be able to, to look at and make it a little bit more uh, interactive and fun to work with versus one or two lines of data. But obviously, as you build out your, your bet log, you'll start out with a smaller number of bets. But as you continue to use the the dashboard, you'll have a lot more data to, to go off of. So just wanted to caveat that. But the first thing we'll do is just insert a couple of uh, new tabs here. First one is I like to just do a divider tab to know, separate where my, my tabs and what they represent. So I'm just going to call this pivots. I'm going to change the color on it just so we know that it's not used and put this little arrow to the right knowing that the information for the pivots is going to be to the right. And then we can call this total pivots. This is where we're going to put all of our pivots for that summary sheet. So all the pivots that are going to drive these four summary boxes here we'll have on one sheet and then the rest of the, the pivots we'll have on a separate and we'll make sure that we have spacing and we structure it so as the data grows, the pivots won't overlap and break the, the dashboard. That's critical whenever you build Excel dashboards is you want your data to be structured within the pivot table. So as you add more data in rows, it can grow and it's not going to overlap and cause your dashboard to, to fail on you. So we'll get rid of these grid lines and we can go ahead and create our, our first pivot table. So in order to, to create these pivot tables, we'll go back to our bet log. You can just do a control A and that's gonna highlight your, our entire table. And then we can go to insert and then we can go to pivot table and then from table range. And it's gonna bring in our bet log table. And then we want an existing worksheet. We'll do this little arrow up and we'll just select B2 and click okay. And so for the first one, we just want profit, which is going to be this net sum of net amount. And so that's going to be, and we can rename that to total profit. So that is the total amount of profit. And if you want to format the, the data, we go to I'll do that again. So everybody can see that a little bit easier. You have your pivot table, you go down to your values, click on it, value field settings, and then you do number formatting. We can make that currency. We do two decimal places. We can keep the dollar sign and then we'll go red with print this with brackets around it if it's negative. Click OK and click OK and you can see it reformatted that. And then let's go ahead and rename this. So we've got a pivot table analyze. And right now it just comes with pivot table one. We'll call that our total profit. All right, so there's pivot table number one. And go ahead and select that. Space out a couple rows here, and then we'll do a paste it in just so we have a pivot table to work with. And we're going to go to pivot table analyze. And so this pivot table is going to be our return on investment. 
And so there's two ways we can do this. We could either do return percent here, and then we could just do value field settings and then just do an average. And then we could change that to number formatting and then percentage. Click OK. So this would be the average return on our bets of 2.33%. But that is going to not be quite accurate because that is going to take the average of each individual line instead of doing a, a sum product essentially of our, our net amount divided by our wager amount. And so in order to make this even more accurate is we can go to field items and sets and then do a calculated field. And here we can create a new calculated field. I'm going to call it ROI percent. And then the formula here is we want to take our net amount, insert field. We just want to divide that by our wager and click it. Insert field, net amount divided by wager, and then click OK. And so it brought in that ROI percent. We can get rid of our average of return percent. So this is a this is the actual ROI percent. We'll change that formatting to be percentage. And then click OK and OK. So there is our ROI percent. We can just rename that to ROI percent. And then since we named our calculated field ROI, you can't have a calculated field in a pivot table the same. So what you can do is just add a space at the end. So visually, it, it looks the same. So that's just something that's helpful to know. We can rename this to ROI table. And so that net amount, go back to our bet log, the net amount divided by the wager, that's the same formula we had here in our return percent. So it's the same thing. It's just a little bit more accurate because it's going to take the sum of all the, the net amounts divided by the sum of all the wagers versus just doing the average of this column. So you can do it either way, but just wanted to show you how to create a calculated field too, if that's something of interest to you. All right, we'll add a couple more columns and then we'll do our, our third pivot table. And for this one, we're just going to do the number of bets. So we can just do a count of pretty much any of these. We could just do a paid and then we'll do value field setting and do it to count. And then we will change that so we get a little bit better formatting on it. Let's do a number. Let's do the space. Get rid of any decimals. We go and OK. So 3,937 bets. We just rename that to bets. And then we'll do pivot table analyze and rename this table bet count. Okay. And then the next one, we'll grab this, add a couple spaces here. And this is going to be our win loss percent. So go up here, bring in our win loss. We'll actually do in rows. And then we will do, we will summarize this by show value as percent of column total. And click OK. All right, so this is just going to split out how many draws or pushes we had, how many losses, and how many wins. And then we can go up here to design, and we can get rid of that grand total. Or you can keep it, it doesn't matter. Um, but basically, yeah, you want to make sure it's 100%, and that's our split. And so what we want to do here is we could add a couple rows, but let's say that you're creating it and maybe your your initial rows just have win and loss, but you haven't had any pushes yet. And so if you reference in your our summary dashboard, the the a certain cell, so maybe if we reference 05, but we didn't have any draws yet, it'll throw off and you won't reference the right thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put in a sum if formula just to make sure we get the right amount here, always, regardless of what we have as far as draws, losses, or wins. So sum if I'm going to just do a range here. It could be, you know, you can grab quite a few cells if you want. And then the criteria is just going to be a W for a win. And then the sum range will just be the corresponding amount of rows. Lock that in. And we can format that to be a percent. So this this will be the cell that we reference for our 
dashboard. Like I said, because this one can change as far as if you don't do draws or you haven't had any yet, you don't want to have an incorrect reference and just make it just 100% foolproof. I, I'm just going to reference this 09 whenever we build out our, our summary dashboard. So now we have the pivot tables to summarize these. And now we're actually going to create this little interface here, this nice looking dashboard. And so with the color scheme that I have here, I think this really makes the dashboard appealing. I think the colors all flow really nicely. And if you're, if you're not a creative type, and I can't say I'm too creative, I like to get creative with Excel, but as far as color palettes go, I, I definitely don't have too good a sense of it. So a really helpful place to go is color.adobe.com. And this is completely free for you to do. And then if you go to that website, I have it pulled up here, go to explore and you can just type in anything. I'm going to type in sports since we're doing a sports betting dashboard. And it's going to bring in all these color palettes that you can use as your color scheme for your dashboard. So this is really helpful just to go to get a, a canvas of a lot of different color schemes together. And so you can flip through this if you want and see if there's one that you really like. And what you can do is you can click on it and it's going to give you the hex codes on each one of the, the colors that you like. You obviously don't have to do all of them, but you could pick a handful or just kind of browse around the website. But I, I found this to be super helpful to just copy in these hex codes put them into your Excel workbook to have as a reference, and then you can pick and choose which ones you like and build out a, a much more visually appealing color palette than what Excel's got built in for their default color scheme. So that's what I did to, to get the color schemes I have today. And I have off over here, off the screen, what the colors I've, I've chosen for this, or you could go to the website, the color.adobe, browse, see if there's something that appeals to you whatever, whatever your preference is, but that's just some, a helpful tip for, for color schemes. I think that can really change, um, for the better, a dashboard, make it really way more appealing. Back over at the working model, I copied in the hex codes into a blank worksheet that I called dashboard and removed the grid lines. And so this is where we're going to actually build out our dashboard. And so the first thing we're going to do is build that summary section and so to do that we're going to go insert shapes and we're going to go to rectangles and we're going to select this rectangle rounded corners i just think the rounded corners on shapes look much better than straight edges so we'll copy that in and then we can go ahead and format it so go shape format we can do our shape fill and i've already used these colors over to the right uh, recently so they show up here in the recent colors which is helpful but if you're using different colors you could go to the more fill colors and then that brings up the hex code. You could copy in whatever color you want to use. Just that's helpful to, to know. But I have the option since I've done it to do the recent color. So it's the color I want. Expand this out a little bit. And then we'll do the same thing for some of the, the smaller shapes within that larger rectangle. You know, same thing. Bring in a shape and then do shape format shape fill we want it to be a darker gray with the shape outline to be a lighter gray and so this is something that's helpful so once you get one shape how you want it you can hold down Control shift and it's going to bring up that little plus sign you can just drag it over you can see it's just copying over the exact same shape multiple times and so now we have and this is something that you can just kind of keep playing with the, the formatting on we have the shapes we can position them how we want them, put them in that. We can move this over a little bit. And then I also have, we look back to our finished product here. Shapes, and we have these smaller icons on, with it, on top of them. And then we have some labels. And then we have our pivot table values coming through. So the next part would be adding some smaller shapes. So we'll do the exact same thing. Insert shape we'll do that rectangle with rounded edges make it smaller and then shape format we want that to be a light shape fill with the shape outline dark so that brings in that and then i just play some icons in those so I'll drag those over four times just to make it 
look appealing. And so to insert an icon, you go up to insert icons. These are going to be canned icons within Microsoft Excel. And you can see there's hundreds to choose from. You could type in, type in sports just to see what comes up. You can see a lot of different sports icons. I selected the, the playbook as one of them. You can do insert and it brings it in and you could place it inside one of those. And then you go graphics format and you could change the, the color on it. it defaults to black. So that's how to do the icons. I'm going to go ahead and do that for the rest of them along with inserting text boxes. So for instance, like total profit, hit that text box, do some formatting, bring it into the area we want, shape format, do no fill. We don't want an outline either. And then the text fill, we want it to be like a dark blue. We can go ahead and bold it and increase the font. So I'm going to go ahead and do just some formatting here. Same thing that you know, you're going to have to go through just do this manually yourself, but I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. So we're not, I'm just not talking through the same process a bunch, but I'll add in the icons, add in the labels, and then we'll get into actually adding in our pivot table references. Okay. I went through and did all the formatting. So whenever you get to this stage where you've you know, updated your your summary table to look similar to what I have here, or whatever colors or icons you've chosen. The next step is going to be to bring in our pivot table values. And so what's helpful to do with that is if you double, double click to get your intermediate size shape here highlighted, you go up to the formula bar and click enter the equal sign. And then you go to the total pivots tab. And so something key here is to select some, val some cell that's not a pivot table. So I'm going to select B5, and I'm just going to change that reference to be B3, and then lock that in and click Enter. And so that'll bring in that pivot table value that we want, because you cannot reference. So if I tried for this next one, for the ROI, referencing this Git pivot, I'm going to get an error. So that's why we got to kind of trick Excel and say, you know, get the same cell, but just get to it a little bit different way. And so... We can do F5, and then we're actually going to change that to F3, enter, and then this one, we'll do the same thing. Little pivots, J3, click enter, and then for the overall win percentage, equals little pivots. And in this one, we can reference that 1% reference cell that we created, 09 in this instance. So now we have our values, and then we can just format those. So shape format, we go up to our text fill. We'll do that dark green. And you can see I have it formatted where it's bottom right uh, and right aligned just so it looks good and doesn't overlap with any of our text. We can bold that, increase the font, do the same thing with this one, shape format, text fill, bold it. And then we can increase the font to 16 or so. Same thing. So there's a lot of manual, just kind of tedious stuff that has to go on with these dashboards in order to get them look just really pristine at the end. But I think it's definitely worth it because they are really powerful and it's really great to be able to know how to do one yourself. Okay, so now we have our summary table finished and we have values that actually mean something. Now the next part is being able to interact with, with these values. So in order to do that interaction, we're going to go to the total pivots tab and we're going to insert slicers. So select one of your pivot table areas, get this pivot table analyzed to pop up. And we're going to do insert slicer. And then for that, we're going to bring in our league, our sport, our type and our sports book. That'll bring up four separate slicers. You can go ahead and select all of them, do control X, and then let's paste them into our dashboard tab. And you can go ahead and just go up to Slicer if you select one. And you can select some different Slicer settings. Um, doesn't matter which one, ever, whatever one you think looks good. Um, there's some default ones that look pretty good, but you may need to modify them. But we can go ahead and just kind of get those stacked in here. And you can format the size of them to however you want. Bring those in, kind of stack them. So what the slicers do is that's where the interaction comes from. That's what makes the 
the dashboard so powerful. And so you can see that right now we select some values and everything's moving with just that total profit because we did these slicers just on the total profit pivot table. And so in order to get these to interact with all of them, we right click one, go report connections. And we wanna select all of our tables here. Click okay. And so now you can see that we are having interactions with all of the different data points as I move through. And so we'll do the same thing with the other ones. Go ahead and just select your report connections. Okay. It's a right click and then just select report connections. So now every single one of these interacts with all four of our summary. And now we have a dashboard that actually can be modified and will move around and interact with whoever is using it and allows you to be able to say, okay, what am I, how is my DraftKings activity looked over the past year? And you can see lost $30 on 1,134 bets, bet in GM up $10 on 448 with the ROI of 1.85%, 1% of 44. So this is where slicers and dashboards are super powerful. And if we want to maybe align these and clean this up a little bit, we'll go to select them all and then go home and actually we'll go page layout and we'll go align. You can distribute them vertically and then you can align them left just to make them look a little bit better. So you play around with the, the formatting, but that's that's essentially the, the video for today. So that got us to some pivot tables. It got us this completed summary with slicers. And so the, the next video will build out some of the, the pivot charts. I'll bring up the, the finished product again. We'll build out some of these percent of bets and then the wager type by ROI and then the profit bucketing here. So we'll work on all this for the next video, but this should be enough to keep you busy for a while. And thanks for watching and God bless.